Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to talk about sorting and go over two different sorting algorithms. <coughs> so a very common algorithm that we have in programming deals with sorting. Here's the problem. Assume you have an integer, I'm uh, sorry, an array of integers and a number of integers in the array. Put the integers in the same array in ascending or descending order. So let's say that we start with uh, the array uh, 3, 8, 4, 6, 7, 1, 5, 2. Uh, where we're starting at index 0 and going up to index 7. What we want to do is inside of that exact same array, we want to create 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's the basic idea behind sorting. You probably have seen a number of applications that utilize sorting. Uh, anyone who has used any spreadsheet applications such as Microsoft Excel, you have the ability to sort in that. Uh, most uh, things that are listed in a table, you have the ability to sort the individual columns of the table. How do we go about sorting? One approach is that we can iterate through the entire array, put the smallest number in the right place. After we put the smallest number in the right place, we're going to iterate through the entire array and put the second smallest number in the right place. And we're going to continue all the way until all of the numbers are in the right place. So let me show you what that would look like uh, here on our previous uh, example. So here are the numbers that we had. Let's see, three, eight, four, six, seven, one, five, two. Okay. Okay, so if we want to put these numbers uh, in order, and what we do first is we try to find the smallest number. So we start off with the value of three. We say, well, if we're looking at number three, from what we know right now, the smallest number is three. And then we go to eight and say, nope, eight's bigger than three, we don't want that one. We go to four and say, nope, four is bigger than three, six is bigger than three, seven's bigger than three. Oh, one is smaller than three. So now the smallest number becomes one, five's bigger than one, two's bigger than one. So we say, okay, we got it now. Let's take number three and let's swap it with number one. So we get one, eight, four, six, seven, three, five, two. So what you see now is that we have one number in the right place. So now we're going to do it again, starting from the next number. We're going to start with 8. So we come down here. Our next iteration through, we say the smallest number is 8. We say, OK, let's look at the next one. 4, uh-oh, 4 is smaller than 8. So 4 is now the smallest. We go to 6 and say, nope, 6 is bigger, 7 is bigger. Oh, 3 is smaller. We go to 5, 5 is bigger than 3. We go to 2, we say, oh, 2 smaller. We put 2 in our smallest. And then we say, OK, swap. 2, which is our smallest element, with what we had in our second spot, which was the 8. So we get 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, 3, 5, 8. So now we know two numbers are sorted, and they're in the right place. So we start over again. We say now our smallest number is 4. We start here at 4. We say, is 4 less than 6? It is. We leave it alone. Is 4 less than 7? It is. We leave it alone. Is 4 less than 3? Nope, it's not. So we're going to update smallest to be 3. Is 3 less than 5? It is. Is 3 less than 8? It is. So then we swap number 4 with, oops, with number 3. So we get 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 4, 5, 8. And now we know that our first three numbers are sorted. Next, we start off and say, well, the smallest number is going to be 6 now. So we're looking here. 6 is less than 7, we leave it alone. 6 is not less than 4, so we update smallest. 4 is less than 5, we leave it alone. 4 is less than 8, we leave it alone. So we swap 4 and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 6, 5, 8. And now we know our first four numbers are in the right place. Continuing, our smallest number starts off at 7. 7 is not less than 6, so we update smallest to be 6. 6 is not less than 5, we update smallest to be 5. 5 is less than 8, so we swap 5 and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we know that that many numbers are in the right place. Now at this point, you may be tempted to just stop. However, the program doesn't realize that we have a sorted list because we haven't checked those three numbers at the end yet. So we need to go through and check those. So now we start off with smallest equal to 6. 6 is less than 7, 6 is less than 8, and then we're done. We say, okay, well, 6 was in the right spot. So now we know we're sorted through there. And then we update it here. 
smallest is going to be 7. We compare 7 to 8, we say 7 is in the right spot. So we know now that we're sorted through here. When we know that we're sorted that far, actually, we know that we're sorted through the last number also, since there's only one other number. If we know that we're sorted through n minus 1 numbers, we also know that we're sorted through n numbers because we have moved the uh, largest element or the smallest element to the right place all the way through. So then we can stop at that point. So this is a uh, one type of a sorting algorithm. You can see how many steps that it took for me to do that. We had comparisons throughout all of these. Uh, the first time through here, uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven comparisons. So let me erase my uh, smallest designations here so that I can write out the number of comparisons that we have on each one of these lines. So the number of comparisons that we had, I had seven comparisons on this slide. On this one, I had one, two, three, four, five, six comparisons. And you can probably see what the pattern is going to be for the number of comparisons that we have on each one of those lines. Uh, if we add all of these up, what we end up with is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to be uh, a type of a summation. It's a summation of I where i goes from uh, 1 up to 7. If we assume that a value of n equals the number of elements that we have in our array, where n in this case is going to be 8, this would be the summation of i, where i goes from 1 to n minus 1. Okay, so to figure out this summation here, the summation of... Uh, of i where i goes from 1 to n minus 1. Well, hopefully you all have learned in one of your classes the summation of i where i goes from 1 to n is n times n plus 1 over 2. What I have is I have something similar to that. I just don't go, oh, I only go up to n minus 1 instead of all the way to n. So what this is going to equal then is uh, this equation here, this n times n plus 1 over 2 minus an n because I only go up to n minus 1 instead of going all the way up to uh, n. So when I do this, let's see, with n being 8, so I know that I'm kind of running out of space here. Let me see if I can move this here. So with n being 8 in this case for the number of elements that we have, I have that this is going to be 8 times 9 over 2 minus an 8. Uh, let's see, 72 over 2 equals a 36 minus 8, which gives me 28 comparisons. When I do a 7 and 6 is 13, and 8 or, and 5 is 18, 4 is 22, 3 is 25, 2 is 27, 1 is magic number 28. So you see how we uh, derived that and came up with this equation right here. This is the total number of comparisons that we're going to have in this sorting algorithm. The sorting algorithm uh, that I just discussed here is one that um, is somewhat popular. So you'll see on the next slide here that this one is called selection sort. So here is the code for the selection sort. You see that we have two nested for loops. Okay, so my nested for loops on lines uh, 7 and 9 uh, the first one is iterating over the entire array, and the second one on line 9, you see that's just iterating over i plus 1 up to size. So that would be the first time I'm iterating through the whole array, and then I iterate through from uh, the 8 all the way up because I'm comparing each one of those values with uh, what I have here in the first spot. And you see I'm setting that value smallest. Smallest is an important value that I'm setting, and that was what I had written over here uh, on the board. You see that when I move it up, though, that I only need to compare this value to the rest of them that are there. And that's why j is starting at i plus 1. So i is, is pointing here, then here, then here, then here, each one down where I have the arrows. Now j is going to be pointing at each element that's on the right side of that one. It's going to iterate through all of them while i still stays the same. What I'm trying to set here is my value of smallest so that I know when I get down to lines 14, 15, and 16, all that this is doing is a swap. This is taking the element that's currently in location i and moving it to the element which is in location smallest. So it's just swapping those two elements, which is what I've done uh, in the uh, example that I have behind me here on the slides.
So that is the selection sort code. I would recommend that you take some time to go through this. Walk through an example using this code, uh, setting the values of i, smallest, and j, and make sure that you can actually see how this code is sorting the values that you have in that array, my array. Okay, the next slide here, this is called the bubble sort algorithm. Bubble sort is somewhat similar to selection sort, however, there are a few more swaps. So if you notice in selection sort, we were doing the comparisons and all we were doing was setting the value of this variable smallest. With bubble sort, it works in a very similar manner to how we're iterating through the array. So we still have the nested loops and you see line seven and line eight look very, very similar if I go back to my selection sort slide to lines seven and nine that I have in my selection sort. So it's very similar. The only difference is that whenever I get to a value which is not less than the other one, I am going to actually swap the values at that point. So instead of waiting until the end of the iteration of the loop to swap values, I swap every time that I come to that point. So I'm performing a lot more swaps. However, what you notice here is that uh, the code is shorter. So bubble sort works very well. The number of comparisons that we have in bubble sort is equivalent to the number of comparisons that we do in selection sort. So the running time is not going to change drastically based on the size of the input. However, it is probably going to run slightly slower because I am going to perform more swaps with random arrays. Uh, so the uh, swapping code that I have here in lines 10, 11, and 12 is going to be very similar or exactly the same as what I have in the selection sort code. Uh, so performing more swaps, it might take slightly longer. If your value of n, the number of elements that you have in your array, is relatively small, bubble sort and selection sort are probably going to be uh, very similar in their running times. Bubble sort is very popularly used. Uh, just two for loops, a comparison statement, and then a swap. That is uh, all that there is to a bubble sort. Again, take an array, walk through the code, make sure that you figure out how this is sorting the array, and make sure that it comes out correct. Uh, bubble sort is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular sorting algorithms that exist because programmers can write this in relatively few lines of code and they often will write this if they just need to sort something very, very small. If you need to sort something which is a very large list, so maybe this is going to be on the order of hundreds of thousands or millions or more elements in an array, you probably do not want to use bubble sort or selection sort. There are other sorting algorithms that are a little bit more complicated. However, they are going to run faster on those types of lists. And that would be heap sort, merge sort, and quick sort are some other popular algorithms. There are many different sorting algorithms that exist. You can take a look, just do a quick Google search, look on Wikipedia. You're going to find a lot of different sorting algorithms out there. Uh, these are the more popular ones, selection sort, bubble sort, and then uh, merge sort, heap sort, and quick sort. Uh, chances are in a future class, when you take an algorithms class, you will go over these in more detail. You will prove that all of these algorithms are able to sort correctly. You will also determine the running time using a similar analysis to what I did right here uh, behind me on the board. Okay, uh, that's gonna do it for the sorting lecture. We will write a program that uh, implements a sorting algorithm in just a second. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.